In recent days, it's emerged that Keir Starmer, whilst a member of the Shadow Cabinet under Jeremy Corbyn, was approached by leading law firm Mishcon Dorea to work for them in a consultancy role. Of course, with much being made at the moment of MPs earning a lot of money by taking on second jobs, some of which may qualify as a conflict of interest, it's notable that not only was Starmer approached to do this, but he allegedly intended to take the position up until Corbyn intervened. Prior to entering the shadow cabinet, Starmer had already been working a second job, taking £26,000 a year besides his MP salary. So for all the criticism of Tory MPs right now, entirely justifiable as it is, we cannot have members of other parties being treated any differently for doing it as well. And when that MP now happens to be the leader of the opposition, well, it hardly instills much faith that this practice of MPs enriching themselves when they're supposed to be working full time as our representatives will end with a change of government right now. So who are Mish Dorea and what is their relationship with Keir Starmer? Well, it's a big Silver Circle law firm based in London and Singapore, former law firm of the year in 2017, employing over 500 lawyers. That's the blurb. As far as their work goes, well, most notably, they represented Remainer businesswoman Gina Miller in her legal challenge against the government in 2016 to force a vote in Parliament on whether to leave the EU rather than just trigger Article 50. They have a darker side, though. Mishcon specialise in bringing defamation cases against people. According to The Guardian, prior to the murder of anti-corruption Maltese journalist Daphne Galizia, Mishcon were attempting to financially cripple her by threatening to sue on behalf of a client doing business in Malta. Her sons accused the firm of harassment and intimidation, ending only when their mother was murdered, something the firm was not implicated in, I should add, but her sons are on record as saying the campaign for justice in our mother's case cannot be disentangled from the abuse she suffered at the hands of Mishcon de Reyes lawyers. The EHRC report into Labour anti-Semitism, widely panned by, amongst others, the Labour Jewish affiliate body Jewish Voice for Labour for ignoring glaring evidence such as that leaked report, also involved Mishkan Dorea, who, according to their own website, worked for two years with the Jewish Labour Movement, an organisation where you need neither be in Labour nor Jewish to be a part of, and whistleblowers from the party to compile contributions and submissions made towards that report. They comment on the report on the same page of their website, stating that this is a landmark decision from the EHRC and demonstrates that the refusal by the Labour Party to acknowledge and act on the issue of anti-Semitism was itself an act of harassment. We and our client welcome the decision and hope the Labour Party will now swiftly implement the findings of the EHRC. They also happen to be the go-to firm for the Israel lobby, according to Asa Wynn Stanley of Electronic Intifada. They've represented Margaret Hodge and were named in the Panama Papers as acting as intermediaries for offshore businesses, which of course isn't illegal, it just should be. You get a flavour for them at this point, I think, without me rambling on any longer. So, Starmer's connection then. Well, he worked for them prior to becoming an MP and continued to do so as a backbencher, working a second job pretty much from the moment he became an MP, as he has criticised so many Tories for doing now, trousering £4,500 a month for legal advice to them. As soon as he became a front bencher, the shadow Brexit secretary under Jeremy Corbyn, this ceased. But Mishcon still wanted his services, and discussions were had regarding that, as Starmer himself has fessed up to just the other day when speaking to Sam Coates of Sky. In 2017, you were in talks to take a consultancy job yourself with Mishcon Derea. Was the decision was that decision wrong? Do you regret that now? I have, in fact, given up my practicing yeah, but at the point to at which you said it was lawyer. Wrong. Yeah, but at the point at which you said it was wrong, you were in talks to take a job yourself. No, I wasn't. And um, we, I was in discussion, nothing happened. Bit of a weasel, isn't he? It is still the Labour Party's official position, as laid down under Jeremy Corbyn, that the party is opposed to second jobs for MPs. Despite demands on Starmer that he reiterate this, he hasn't actually done so, implying he's not opposed to this practice. And in fact, as if to confirm this, it came to light that actually he wanted to continue working for Mishcon as a front bencher. Alex Nunn's author and Corbyn's former speechwriter produced a brilliant thread on Twitter, go and have a look at it, laying out the fact that despite arguing that he might take up an advisory role at Mishcon's training academy, that is, in his team's words, it'd be really cool, but Starmer was blocked from doing so by Corbyn. Everything this man says to condemn what other MPs, mostly Tories, but 
not exclusively so, have been doing, the Jeffrey Coxes and the like and the others in this so-called Tory Slee scandal, is utter hypocrisy coming from Key. Worse, at the time this was happening, Mishcon were representing Gina Miller in that Article 50 court case. Starmer, the shadow Brexit secretary, wanted to advise a company representing a Remainer and wanted to continue to say they were in discussions, as per his words in that video clip a moment ago. This was 2016. Labour were polling well, maintaining that neutral position they were getting criticised for, but getting away with it, whilst giving Theresa May's government ample rope to hang itself with. Starmer wanted to jeopardise all of that for the sake of taking a second job. The conflict of interest this would have created would have been staggering. Fortunately, he was told no by Jeremy Corbyn. Starmer, of course, claimed it was his decision, but then honesty isn't something he's known for. Little wonder this got exposed in that interview with Sam Coates, and his hypocrisy was clear in that for all to see. That isn't the end of it, though. Since becoming leader, those whistleblowers Mishcon were representing, many of whom featured on that panorama hatchet job that Labour were taking to court, that the party was advised it would win against, were paid off by Starmer. The HRC report they were so involved in, despite allowing Corbyn the legitimacy to criticise it, led to Starmer suspending him as an MP, something that still stands to this day over a year later. An element of revenge, perhaps, for blocking that second job? It's also widely documented now that the Labour Party under Starmer is a less safe place for Jewish members critical of Israel. Again, in line with Mishkan's track record of supporting Israeli interests. A Labour MP going completely unpunished, for example, for suggesting Jewish voice for Labour, mentioned before, critical of Starmer's actions in this regard, be proscribed from the party, a group wholly consisting of Jewish Labour members. Stop from taking that job by Corbyn, it hasn't stopped Starmer from second jobbing since. In the Register of Members' Financial Interests for 2021 to 2022, the period we're in now, he has earned almost £26,000 for legal advice for a total of 105 hours' work. That's £248 per hour on the side, whilst allegedly leading the Labour Party at the same time. Of course, this period in the Register is still ongoing and it updates monthly, so We'll see if he's still doing it and whether any more comes onto the, uh, the list in due course. Keir Starmer is a hypocrite for criticising others, for not committing full time to the roles MPs have been elected to. Incredibly privileged, well-paid positions. Not even potential conflicts of interest were enough to put him off. It has to stop, but Labour under his leadership being elected to government probably wouldn't change a damn thing. It would be business as usual. We deserve better than a choice between Boris Johnson and this to lead the country. Never have two more grossly unsuitable characters been the only realistic options before us.